Hey, welcome to Graphic Policy Television, GPTV. I'm Brett. In my hands is a recent release. This is Dio Gracious, A Tale of Rwandan Genocide by J.P. Stassen. Uh, published by First Second. It's a, it's a reprint. It came out originally in 2000. It was the winner of Gosini Prize for Outstanding Graphic Novel Script. And this is a pretty hefty, weighty graphic novel about Rwandan genocide. Um... You know, I have, a, I have a degree in political science. I consider myself pretty worldly and, and generally know what's going on. I am ignorant when it comes to uh, the horrors in, uh, in Rwanda and the genocide that occurred there. And honestly, the African uh, continent as a whole, I'm pretty unaware of, you know, the, the real deep history. I kind of know the basics, but, uh, you know, the who everyone is and the, the, the it's just... It's not something I ever learned. Not was it wasn't really a focus in my studies, uh, honestly. So, uh, oh man, I'm, yeah, I'm I'm very ignorant of it. Um, so this focuses on a kid named Dio Gracious, who is clearly traumatized by what he's witnessed uh, during this bloodshed, um, and him dealing with this PTSD. And it's a pretty, it's a weighty like. It doesn't pull punches, it lays things out, and it is a brutal, brutal, brutal graphic novel. But everything begins to come together at the end, and you realize what he's done in multiple ways. Um, the weight of the story really hits you. And I think that's kind of really interesting in the graphic novel in that it's very it's choppy. Um, the story is very choppy, and at times it's kind of hard to figure out exactly what's going on, and I feel like that's partially done on purpose to keep the reader, you know, um, kind of uneven and and make the reader feel like a little off kilter, very much as like the chaos kind of unfolded in the country and for the people there. So uh, we, the reader, is an attempt of a way for us to kind of have that feeling. Um, of, of going through it, obviously, you know, it's just surface, not, you know, not even close to the level, but I think it's an attempt to kind of throw the reader off, um, as opposed to, like, a straight narrative. Uh, it, it's really interesting that way. The other is it does a decent chop, job setting up and, and explaining, like, who the Hoodoos are, who the Tutsis are, um, and the history. Uh, it doesn't do a great job, but does a decent job of that. And uh, by the end of it, like, it's just, it's a build up to the horror. And then when you get to that end and you realize what's going on and it really hits you, it's a, it's a weighty, it's pretty weighty. Um, so as I said, it won an award for the script, which I get. The art and the lettering, I, like, I have a little trouble with. So this is the art style. It's a little kind of cartoony for me, especially the the weight of the story and and it just the style doesn't quite fit it I, I would imagine though also that there'd be some really weird stuff in the uh, if you went to like a much more of a horror aspect of it like the style would change the story a bit so understand that uh, the the lettering one I think the lettering is a little bit small and some of the placements a little odd like might have been worth it maybe re-lettering this uh, in the release, uh, it's not bad. It's just one of those like definitely you've seen better. Um, it, it doesn't like it doesn't take away from the enjoyment and of the story and like really reading it and um, doesn't draw away from that. But at the same time, it's noticeable uh, just because I think lettering is so good in comics that uh, when you see something that's not all that up to snuff, it stands out. Uh, so this is one like it's it won't necessarily give you more depth into the situation in Rwanda and the, the genocide that occurred there, but it does its own thing in opening up your eyes as to how horrific it is and just the, like, my stomach turned towards the end of some of the stuff that's in it um, once you just kind of realize everything that's gone down. So this is obviously not one to read for enjoyment. It's one to just kind of get more in touch with the world around you. Uh, it's out now. It's in comic shops. It's in bookstores. As I said it's a it's a reissue. It came out in two thousand. Uh, it, it retails for twenty one ninety nine. A little bit expensive, but the the quality of the book is really really nice. It's hardcover, and I don't know how to describe the cover. Like the cover just feels really nice. 
Um, the lettering raised a little bit, and then I don't know what material the cover is, but it's just, tactically, it just feels good. Uh, go support your comic shop first and foremost. There's a link beneath this video. You can put in your zip code, tell if your shop's near you. No shop, no problem. Uh, we do have affiliate links. There are affiliate links where you get a small percentage by doing that. You help support our site, so thank you. Uh, as always, if you're into graphic novels, if you're into this sort of storytelling, uh, if you're into first, second, anything like that, you check us out every single day at graphicpolicy.com. We're on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Tumblr, all at Graphic Policy, keeping it nice and consistent. So until next time, keep reading those comics and keep it geeky. Hey, thanks for watching the previous video from Graphic Policy Television. Just by watching, you help support our site. Thank you so much. Now, if you're watching these videos, you probably care about geeky things like movies, television, comic books, toys, games, video games, you name it. You can go and subscribe right now to our YouTube channel to stay in touch and catch all the new videos, or check out our website at graphicpolicy.com. There's a nice link on this end of the video. But as always, thank you for watching. Keep on rocking and keep it geeky.